even throughout, we've been uh, still dealing with Romans 8 and 28. And so today we're going to go, hallelujah, in a, in a, in a, in a direction, hallelujah, dealing with Romans 8 and 28 that um, everyone goes to at a particular point in time in life. So let's just get to it. Romans 8, 28 is, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And, 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 and we know that, right, speaks to the confidence that we have to have in the ability to, of God, that God causes all things to work out purposely for the righteous for two reasons. God causes everything to work out for the good, purposely for the righteous, for two reasons. Because you love God and because you are the called according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and you love God. Of course, you know you love God by uh, loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then you love your neighbor as yourself. How you do those things show how much you love God. And then we even talked about the Great Commission being one of the uh, uh, most important ways that you can love God, how you can love your neighbor as yourself and how you can obey God showing your uh, uh, love for him. But as we think about uh, um, God causes everything to work together for the good. Again, uh, I, I, I want to revisit that term good because contrary to popular belief, God's good is not so that we can compete with, compete with and look like the rest of the world. God's good, when it happens in our lives, is not so we can compete with and look like the rest of the world. And so we, you know, a lot of times when we, we, we you know, we hit our knees, we're asking God for things that uh, will make us compete with and look like the rest of the world. Because we're experiencing and seeing the same commercials that the rest of the world is seeing, right? And so uh, our influence is the rest of the world, amen. But that's not God. Didn't, God didn't say, I, "You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, God cause all things to work together for your good, so you can compete with the Joneses," amen. God's good is for His purpose. And, and so when God's good is for his purpose, we will be given everything we need to accomplish his purpose. But things that work together for the good are not always good for us. Just ask Jesus. Cup he had to drink from was for the good, but it wasn't good for him. So, so remember when, when you know, the good to accomplish God's purpose may not always feel good to you. Ooh. And not only may it not seem good to you, it might not even seem fair. You know, because we, we grow up in a world where one of the first things we say, and it is ain't fair. We're looking for everything to be fair. This is not how you treated this one. This is not what you did here. This is not what, and, 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 and the world is just not. And God is not fair. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He never said my son died uh, on the cross so things could work out and be fair. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Christians must never believe that life is supposed to be fair. Now, I, you know, I mean, think about it. How do you even, how do you even the odds if you believe life lived according to the word of God is not fair? How do you even the odds? I, well, I'm living, I'm supposed to be living, but, but, but it's not I mean, let me tell you how we do some of that. Let's, uh, in Jeremiah 32 and 39, which is God said, I will give them one heart and one purpose to worship me forever for their own good and for the good of all their descendants. Uh, when you believe lack, lack of fairness will make you add to God's purpose. I know God's purpose is that, 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 that we're supposed to worship him 
uh, worship him, but but I, I, I need to even the odds, so I'm going to add something to this purpose so, so I can get what I, what I want. Because doing his, just doing his purpose is not, it's not fair. Second Timothy 1 and 9, for God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He, he did this not because we deserved it, but because that was the plan from the beginning of time to show us his grace through Jesus Christ. Lack of fairness will make you live a less holy life. No, living this way, this ain't, this ain't fair. I'm not, I can't do what they doing. I can't go where they going. Man, they having all the fun. This ain't, it ain't fair. YOLO, you only live once. This ain't fair. Why can't I live? Live it up. Live the life. It's not fair. We concern ourselves with, with fairness uh, 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 um, when we concern ourselves with fairness, we will find ourselves influenced by people who do not care about the scriptures or our Bible. Uh, and, 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 and it seems as though we are doing, it seems as though they are doing better that, than we are. They, they, they don't care about the scriptures. They don't care about the Bible, but it seems as though they're doing better than we are. It's not fair that I got to follow this word and, and, and they got more money than I got. They got more houses than they got. They, they, they you know, they, they, they do it look like it seems as though they're doing better than I am. It's not fair. If you haven't been there, you're going to be there. If you haven't thought it, the thought's coming. It is the idea of fairness that leads us to question the promises of God. How can they have all of that? They don't even love God. They don't pray. Show don't fast. We can lose our way when we question the goodness of God based on what God is doing for others compared to what he is doing for us. You will lose your way. And so today I want to look at ASAP. Asaph was one of the writers of, 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 the, of the Psalms. I mean, I, Asaph wrote a, a good portion of Psalms. Few of the books, few, few of the passages in the book. But today I want to look at Psalm 73 in particular. And, 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 and Psalm 73, Asaph, who was a Muslim, Musician, I say magician, he was a musician, and, 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 and at times he was with David. And, 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 I, and when I start seeing the name, it's, it's one of those things you guys ever, you, you know, you ever get a car and never see that car, but when you get the car, now you see cars like it all over the place. Like, I go, there it is. I never saw anybody in this car. Now I see everybody in this car. That's the same thing with Asaph. I never even seen the name in the Bible, but once I, I, I got hip to his name, then I just, it, you see his name is all, it, all in the Bible. The family of Asaph. Oh, thank you, Jesus. One of my favorite scriptures even had his name in it. Uh, I went, when, when dealing with Jehoshaphat, but that's a whole nother thing. But, but here, Asaph, he starts out Psalm 73 talking about the fact that he almost lost his footing. We're going to get to that. He almost lost his footing and, and his feet were slipping. But what, and what he was referring to was his walk with God. He almost lost his footing. His feet were slipping in his relationship with God all because of fairness. All because of, it, this ain't, it ain't fair. And so it's in the word of God so that we can we can be careful not to lose our footing and slip. Because some people slip and never get back up. Look at Psalm 73, 1 to 3. It says, truly God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. But 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 for, but 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 as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping, and, and I almost and, and I was almost gone. For I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. It 
He messed him up. And I was like, man, this, it, it's almost like it's almost like somebody wrote that in 2021 and slipped that in the Bible on me. See, the goodness of God seemed to be available to everyone, regardless of how that much they loved God or or whether called according to his purpose. But 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 he said, when I looked at it, I began to slip. Because I didn't like it. I, I couldn't figure it out. I didn't think it was fair. I, I didn't think it was fair. I love God. I obey God. I'm totally committed to God and you don't, but you got more than me. According to the world. In Psalm 7, in, in, in verses 4, it, it, it says, he, he continues to tell us about his observation of these wicked rich. He said, they seem to look, live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. They wear pride like a jewel necklace and, and clothe themselves with cruelty. We, we, we know these people. One just got out of office. But he ain't the only one. We was just listening to something and, and they was talking about a man who worked in the hospital and, and, he, and he didn't even make $15 an hour. And they said the, 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 the man that uh, was the CEO of the hospital made a thousand times his salary. A thousand times. And he got sick cleaning the hospital. He didn't make that. The, his struggle was trying to make $15 an hour. He couldn't even live. He couldn't even live off of what he was making. And when he came back from COVID, they gave him a $6 gift certificate for the cafeteria. The man made, his boss made $30 million. They wear pride like a jeweled necklace and, and clothe themselves with cruelty. Ooh. Look at verse 73. I mean, I mean, verse seven. <laughs> the new living says these fat cats <laughs> have everything their hearts could ever wish for. They scoff and speak only evil in their pride. They seek to crush others. Did y'all see that? They boast against the very heavens and their words strut throughout the earth. Ooh. And so the people are dismayed and confused. Drinking it in all their words. And now what we do, drink, you drink in all the words. I mean, why? we listen to every athlete that's got something to say. Every entertainer that got something to say. Why? Because they're rich. You got people now, now, now social media, they call them uh, 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 influencers. Why? Because they got so many hits, so many likes, they make so much money uh, on the internet and Facebook and Twitter and all that. And so the, the Bible says that, that, that people are, are dismayed and confused and they're drinking in all their words. They got an opinion on everything. And a lot of times, you know, in order to get the hits and the likes, it's evil. They got to be controversial. It says, what does God know? This is some of the things they say. What does God know? They ask, does the most high even know what's happening? Sound like today. If God was here, if, if God cared, why would he allow this? Why would he allow that? And where was he at when this was happening? And my pastor would tell you the same thing I'm telling you right now. How he, said, he said he was the same place he was when they hung his son. So it's evil. It's evil. It's happening everywhere. It's, it, business is evil. Politics is evil. 
Newscasters are evil. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And all we are, uh, 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 if, 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 if we keep our minds going this way and not this way, we just become as confused as the rest of the world. Waiting to wake up just like a, a, a Wizard of Oz. Y'all remember that one? No, it was the Wiz, not the Wizard of Oz. You know, the color today is green. Oh, I like green. Green is this and green is that. And then, and then they wake up, then they have to hear it. And the color is now red. Oh, if you don't have red, you dead, you know. I mean, so that, that was it. I mean, every, they just waited to hear what the Wiz was going to say. And that was the color for that day. I mean, and, and, and anybody that didn't have that color wasn't anything. It's terrible, but it's true today. It was elementary, but it, it's true today. Whatever the world says is good, that's what we call good. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so their lives, Asaph, in looking at their, their lives, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Look, 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 uh, uh, it, it confused him. Look, he said, he said in, in verse 12, look at, look at these wicked people. Enjoying a life of ease while their riches multiply. And this is when it begins to, his feet begin to slip. Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep my, my, myself innocent for no reason? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. I mean, there's some, some good Christians that woke up feeling this way. There's some Christians, uh, like I said, I, I, I mean, compared to the rest of the world, you, we don't have to wake up this way. But there's some people who, who wake up loving Jesus in other parts of the world and Vic, they could have wrote this. They could have wrote it. It's how they feel. They wake up in the morning, hallelujah, loving God, but, but, but wondering, is this the day that someone's going to kill me for being a Christian? Are they going to hunt me down today? And here's Asaph talking about it right now, talking about it back then that we can read it right now. And this is how he, he's felt. And as some of us, even though we don't uh, 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 um, uh, get nothing but trouble all day long and every morning brings you pain, you're still wondering about, did, am I doing all of this for nothing? Look what they're getting and they don't even act like they love God. They don't even try to obey the word of God and look how they're living. It messes some of us up because our focus goes off of God and onto them. Their lives make him question his purpose for living. Their lives make him worship. I mean, question his worship of God. Their lives make him question his holy living. Their lives make him question the cup he has to drink. Nobody else got to drink this. Why have I had to deal with so many deaths in my family? Why did I have to lose my job? Why did I have to lose my marriage? Why is this happening to me? Look at all of them sinful, wicked people. Look what he says in verse 15. And this is why it's so important for us not to fail to assemble ourselves together. This is why it's so important for us to communicate doing Bible study in the women's men and the men. This is why it's so important not to just get the word, but to talk about what you're confused about. 
Talk about what doesn't make sense to you. Because nine times out of ten, it, it, it doesn't make sense to somebody else or it didn't make sense to them until they, until they talked it out. He says, he says, if I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. Now you ain't say Talking like that, you ain't say Talking like that, you don't love God. No, I do, I do, but I just want, I just don't understand it. And some of us, we got to be real that there's some things we just don't understand. And so we suffer in silence because we don't understand. Why? I mean, why? Look at all they have. I mean, you, they can't even spend all of that. I mean, if he made 29 million, that one guy, if he made 29 million and, and, and gave a, a million to be divided up to the workers, what's that difference between 29 and 30 million? But it would have made such a difference in their lives. He thought that God was, 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 was unfair. He said, he said, eh, eh, eh. If I had spoken this way to others, I would, I would have been a traitor to your people. He said, so I tried to understand why the wicked prosper, but it was a difficult, it was a difficult task. What a difficult task it is to try to figure it out on your own. What a difficult task it is to, to not hit your knees and go to God in prayer and ask God for wisdom. He said, if you ask for wisdom, he'd give it to you. Lord, I need to understand. I need you to make me wise in this situation. I need you to, I need to understand why wicked people prosper. And so he thought, on, he thought God was unfair, but he kept it to himself because he wanted to sound like Everybody else. How you doing, my brother? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. You're doing all right. Doing good. Bless my sister. Bless. And you're slipping. And you're falling. Because you don't understand. So we have to learn how to talk things over with God and with other believers. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. If, if you're dull in an area, if you don't, not understanding is dull. I need to sharpen that. My wife said something was so profound. She said, guess what? When, when iron sharpens others, iron, you see sparks. It's not, a, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not a comfortable thing to do. Iron sharpens iron. We say it you know, so, so easily. But, but there's going to be some sparks. There's going to be some friction. There's going to be, you, you, you might have to argue a little bit. You don't have to prove your point. You have to bring out some scripture. Iron sharpening iron is not some easy thing. You get some people, you, you, you say something to them, they get mad, they shut down, and you can't even have a conversation. Well, guess what? You're going to remain dull. Sometimes you have to listen. Sometimes you have to get your point to prove your point. You just can't shut down. Well, I, I, I know what I'm trying to say, but I just can't get it out. Well, no, you don't. You don't know what you're trying to say then. That's just an easy way to shut up. Because if you can't get it out, you don't know what you're saying. Because if you do know what you're saying, you can get it out. And so it's going to take some it's going to take some time. It's going to take some, you know, art, you know I, I need to articulate this. I need to, I, 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 you know, I need to go back. I need to look at this. I need to, you know, because you have to realize I don't know what I'm saying. And then now you got to go back and do some studying. Uh, they always picking on me. It, it's just not, it ain't fair. It ain't fair. They always picking on me. So, 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 so we left him, he said, he said, I, I, I tried to understand the, why the wicked prosper, but it was a difficult task. Oh, but thank God for verse 17, because in verse 17, he says, then. Y'all help me say then. He said, then I went into your sanctuary, oh God. 
See, a lot of times, I, a lot of times, see, when, when, when people talk about, well, I don't, I don't have to go to church. I don't need to go to church. I don't, you know, I understand. We got a lot of people watching on Facebook, but eventually you got to go into the sanctuary of the Lord. Eventually, you got to go around some people who believe the way you believe. You can't sharpen no iron. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You, you, can't, you can't sharpen no iron stand by yourself. He said, then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. See, it's not what they have, it's where they're going. See, you got to remember, I'm not, I, I'm not living this, you know, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, we know God caused all things to work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. But, but, but look, I, I'm not living for the, what the good I could get. I'm living for the end I'm going to receive. I'm living to live again. I'm not living to compete with the Joneses. I'm not living to amass a lot of money. I'm living to bless people. People don't understand that. See, if, if you understand the fact that, 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 that when you sow a seed, you reap a harvest, the more you give, the more you receive. The world don't understand that. The world say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to receive and I'm going to keep. That's how, that's, how they, that's how they amass riches. But that's not how we amass riches. We, 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 we get, we give, we get, we give. And, God, and, 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 and it ain't a scripture. I can't find the Bible, but it's true. You can't beat God giving. You can't be God given. He said, and finally, I understood the destiny of the wicked. Truly, you put them on a slippery path and send them sliding over the cliff of destruction. In an instant, they are destroyed completely, swept away by terrors. Just when you, you know, there's good and bad. Of listening to the lifestyles of the rich and famous. It's good and bad of listening to entertainment tonight. It's good and bad of, 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 of peeking behind the veil. Because Asaph, if he had access to entertainment tonight and, and all that, he would realize that, 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 that sooner that, that, that their lives are messed up. A lot of these rich people, they, got, they have a lot of money, but they have a lot of problems too. And so all he saw was when they were out looking good, but, 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 but these TV shows allow us to see behind. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so they are on a slippery path, sending them uh, sliding over a cliff of destruction. In an instant, they are destroyed because they're swept away by terrorists. i never forget hearing the, the guy that, that made armor all. I mean, armor all. What's that? Yeah, what's that? What's the... Under arm. He didn't even sleep. He said, I, I can't sleep. I only sleep a couple hours a night. Why? Because I, I got to get up. I, I'm, I'm always thinking somebody's going to take something from me. I'm always thinking that, that you know, that somebody's going to do something better. I mean, he got a billion dollars and he can't sleep. Because he's always, he's always trying to work this out and work that out and think, well, the early bird, early bird catches the worm. That's not the mentality of a Christian. A Christian be like, well, I'm asleep because God never slumbers. <laughs> huh? <You're not. laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They used to tell us when we was growing up, you got to do twice as good to be considered as good as. That's what they used to tell us. Well, I, but to me, Jesus is the great equalizer. I don't live that way no more. I don't live that way no more. No, I don't live that way no more. I got to be twice as good to be considered as good as in whose eyes? See, because I want to be, I want to be approved by God. So when I want to be approved by God, I ain't got to be twice as good because it has good ass in this world because Jesus is the great equalizer. Jesus can open doors in this world that, that, that no man can, 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 can close. 
Ooh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so, so the thing is, is that you got to keep your eyes on God. And then when you're keeping your eyes on other people uh, and you notice who they are, just understand their destiny. Because we're not doing this for what we can get from God. We're doing this so that we can be reconnected back to God and live with him for eternity. All the other things he already promised. He already said, you know, if you choose life, you're going to be blessed. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessings and curses. Choose life. Blessings already come with the choice. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. It already, it's already included. Stop looking at other people. Look at your life. And look at your example. So his problem was not with rich. His problem was with the wicked rich. That was his problem. His problem was not with rich people. The people he described was wicked rich people. There's a difference. That's why the Bible says it's the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money. There's a lot of people that do a lot of good with money. You know, there's no, nobody ever says thinks it's fair when, you, when, when, when if God blesses you with a with a, with, with hundred thousand dollars and somebody else get blessed with a thousand dollars. Nobody ever goes, but God, this isn't fair. Why do I have a hundred thousand? Why do we never go that direction? It's never fair until you look at somebody has more than you. And then you begin to examine their life. Because now you're trying to understand why, instead of understanding what you have and what you have it for. And what are you doing with it? Oh, thank you, Jesus. He has a. It bothered him. And, and, and if we were truthful, nothing bothers us more than somebody having more than us who don't love God. <laughs> look at look at Psalm look at Psalm 73 look at 20, 20 it says when you arise O Lord now I don't know about y'all and I don't and, and I don't have any proof of this but I, I'm really looking at this as the resurrection just maybe because Easter was just last week but, but I was like wow look at this it says when you arise O Lord you will laugh at their silly ideas as a person laughs at dreams in the morning he will laugh at the way, you know, when, when you arise, oh Lord. Because that God never sleeps in summer. So I'm trying to figure out, well, when is he going to rock? And I'm saying, well, maybe he's foretelling about. But this is how I also connected it. When you arise, you're going to laugh. But when you arise, then I will realize my heart was bitter. And I was torn up inside. And I was so foolish and, and arrogant, ignorant. Well, arrogant and ignorant. Ignorant, I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet I still belong to you. You my, you hold my right hand. I mean, think about this, is that when we begin to live a, a resurrected, a born again life, we have to begin to realize that, you know, some things make our heart bitter and we don't even understand why that 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 we, that we get so torn up inside over things that don't even they don't even matter to you why what what does it matter if that man got a billion dollars what is that to you what is that to you all you're thinking about is what you don't have but but his don't i got him having money don't have anything with you not having money He said, I must, I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you, yet I still belong to you. You hold my hand. You hold my hand. That's more important than all the money in the world. God holds my hand. <laughs> Woo, thank you. Look at, look at 24, it says, he said, see, this is the man after he came to the sanctuary. 
after he reconnected with God. See, some people, they, 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 they slip and they slide so far that they just get so fed up with the unfairness of God that they give up on God. But he made his way back into the sanctuary. And he began to understand who God is in his life. And he says, in verse 24, he says, you guide me with your counsel. Leading me to a glorious destiny. Regardless of if I have any money in my pocket or not, my love for God is leading me to a glorious destiny. And then he began to think, whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on the earth. See, when we put our focus on God, we can get our focus off of people. You begin to cherish what you can have in a relationship with God, you get your eyes off of people. What you have is more valuable than a billion dollars. Don't get, don't get me wrong. Look, we already know God said he, 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 he said he's going to bless. He said he's going to uh, uh, provide for you. He said he's going to, you know, I mean, but the thing is, is that that's why that's why thou shalt not covet is so important. Because your, your mind is now off of God and on what you got, somebody else has. And so you can never follow God if you're following them. Look at all the detailed information he had about rich people. He was, he, was, he was studying them instead of studying God. He said, and he said, I desire you more than anything on earth. He says, then he begins to get it. He says, my health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. He said, he said, he said, he said, look, these bodies going to get sick. God, it ain't fair that I'm getting sick. These bodies was dying the day you was born. And he says, he says, and my spirit may grow weak. He's not talking about the Holy Spirit in you. He's talking about the, that life spirit. It's going to grow weak. It's going to grow weak and we're going to, and that's how we're going to eventually die. We're going to get sick. Spirit grows weak. Life spirit grows weak and we eventually die. But he says, look, but my, but, but God remains the strength of my heart. And what I have in him can never be taken away. He's mine forever. I will have him here on this earth and I will have him here when I go. Any money I have is going to be left here. Any possessions I have is going to be left here. But God is mine forever. Then he begins to think about those who have thought the way that he's thought and, and went another direction that he did. He said those who, who desert him, those who desert God, will perish. For you destroy those who abandon you. People will leave God because they think God is unfair. People will leave God because they just don't understand. Why did my loved one have to die? And theirs didn't. And it seemed like they had the same thing. They had the same, same symptoms, same everything. But my loved one died and theirs didn't. God, you're not fair. I said, I, I, show me where I said I was going to be fair and everything. There are those who will abandon God because he does not operate by their rules of fairness. You better throw your rules of fairness out. My wife used to, my wife, when she would give the kids, I don't care what she'd give kids. It could be peas, carrots, tomatoes. Well, I don't care what it was. Everybody got the same amount. Six peas, six carrots. Ca Man, I would be scooping, going away from me. You know, I ain't care. My wife, six peas, six potatoes, 
Everybody got the same thing. Why? Because the kids will be looking at other people. Other, it ain't fair. He got more than I got. And Claudius has kept, we don't, we have not grown that. We have not grown that. But we better. He said, he said, but as for me, now there's those that have abandoned God and they will get their reward. But he said, but as for me, oh, how good is it to be near God? <laughs> I don't care about the money. I just want to be close to God. See, he got everything I need. See, I might be trying to get money, but I need, I, I need him to bless me in another area. God got more than money. Boy, you got peace, got love, got joy, got long suffering, got goodness, got meekness. That's only in the spirit of God. You only get that with the spirit of God. The rest of the world don't get that. And we need to begin to, we need to start cherishing the things that we can get with God. He said, as for me, how good it is to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter. And look at this, look at this. He said, and I will tell everybody about the wonderful things you do. He, he made the shift. He began, he began talking about the, 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 all of the wonderful things that, that, that the, he felt God was doing for the wicked rich. But oh, when he made the shift. He said, I'm going to tell everything, everybody about the wonderful things you do for me. And I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm not going to be ashamed. I got a Toyota, a 2000 Toyota. I get in my 2000 Toyota and I drive all around the place. I don't care about nobody got no, you got a 2021 Mercedes Benz. I don't care. You, can, you can't get no faster. You can't get nowhere no faster than me. You got to follow 35 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. So those that realize that living for God produces individual results for you that, would, that, that you would not give up for the, all the money in the world. Living for God produces wonderful results for you that you would not give up for all the money in the world. And some of you that have lives right now that, that, that you would not give up. You have, you, have, you have children and grandchildren and, and, and relationships. This is kind of like, you know, would you give all of that up for all the money? Where, I mean, you got, there's, there's things that, that God has given you. Peace in your home. Love of your family. People that love you. People that respect you. Who wouldn't give that up for all the money in the world? It makes you want to be a witness for him. You have to want to be a witness for him. You can't, you can't look at what you have as less than. Oh, no, 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 no. God gave me this. And have you ever think about something that your, 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 your mother, your father, somebody that you love gave you, and then somebody like offered you something new, like, oh, no, uh -uh, I don't want that. Uh -uh. My daddy gave me this. I don't, want, I don't want that. That might be brand new, but I don't want that. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you, to give you, to give you. I got plans for you to give you. My plans for you aren't to give to somebody else. And their plans for them aren't for you. To give you a future and a hope. God's plans for you are always good. That's something that you got to understand. That's something you got to say to yourself. God's plans for me are always good. Now, now, what what makes what makes them seem like they're not good or no good is when you begin to plan. I mean, compare His plans for you with His plans for somebody else. Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
and not what others have that you don't. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's our example. There's a lot of things he could have had. There's a lot of things he could have did. But, but he always said, I come to do the will of the Father. Everything was tempered by I come to do the will of the Father. Not to do my will, not to get my own thing. I always come to do the will of the Father. And my last scripture, just because just we're in this frame of mind of, of, of the resurrection of Jesus, just, I, I want you to see Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Like Asaph, I was slipping, I was falling. He said, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. And I like verse two because it says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And so it tells us, it, 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 it tells us that uh, we need to strip off the sin, sin and what we need to do. Then it, then it tells us who is our example, but then it tells us how our example did it. It says, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Some of you are shamed. You're ashamed of living for God. You're ashamed of what you have. You're ashamed of the amount of people that we have in the church. How many people y'all got in your church? We got a thousand people. How many people y'all got? We got. You changed the subject. Disregarding its shame. Now you see it. In the place of honor besides God's throne, thinking of all the hostility he en endured from sinful people. He said, think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Think of what he had to go through. Think of the shame that he had to endure. Think of how many times Jesus could say, this ain't fair. I didn't sin. I didn't do nothing wrong. This ain't fair. But he did it. And he endured it. If you don't think, if you don't get anything, now understand this life that we live for God is not going to be fair when you compare it to the rest of the world. But when you compare it to what we're going to receive in heaven, we don't even deserve it. It still ain't fair. We getting the best back. We getting the best part. You know, what did I say? The, the better part of the stick or the better. I don't know. We stand. I can't even say I can't. I, I, I had that analogy. I don't know it now. <laughs> Amen. We got the best. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What Jesus tell his disciples, there's no man that's going to give up anything in this world, but not going to get uh, 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 more here and in the life to come. Hallelujah. Get your mind off of fairness. Stop counting what your neighbor had. Stop looking at anything other than Jesus. Enjoy this life. Enjoy this relationship with God. Woo! Enjoy.